Welcome to the UEFA Champions League Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast of the U.S., Josh Lander, joined as always by my mate across the pond, Dan Tracy. How are you today, Dan? Yeah, really good, thank you. The Champions League games are diminishing in number, but it's heating up. We've reached the, the business end of the tournament, so to speak, so let's get down to even more business as I've got four more big bets for you, uh, listeners, viewers, whatever you want to call it, readers as well. Let's get stuck in. And and for me, who, uh, as I have oh, yes, been, been completely transparent, I'm going to be tailing some of these. And at the very least, I love using the game theories uh, that you put together to find us all some really good juice on these bets. Do want to make sure you guys like and subscribe to that page. We've got uh, a couple other vid- uh, game well, we have plenty of videos for you, but there's two games in each of these videos now. We cover Tuesday's matches. In this one, we're covering Wednesday's matches as well. All of these are the second leg of the knockout stage. So as we mentioned in the other video, the closest thing we have to that World Cup knockout stage where you can sort of depend on teams to be playing for their tournament lives at this point. We're going to be going through Wednesday's games. Like I said, I also want to let you know Dan has his uh, article up on the lines.com that has two picks from each of these four games that will be played next week. We're recording this on Thursday for you guys to get ahead of these lines and everything. Uh, we're going to start with one of the uh, more surprising games uh, that happened in, in the first leg. This game, in the second leg, obviously back in Germany uh, between Bayern Munich and Manchester City. Manchester City gave them an absolute drubbing, three to nothing. Uh, Hollard, I would say, uh, was incredible in terms of scoring his 11th goal uh, in this tournament and now also has 45 goals, Dan, on in all competition this year the most for any epl player ever at this point across all competitions uh he is just an absolute magnet when it comes to the goal apparently the ball seems to have one to the back of the net uh we'll see if he gets a start in this one but either way uh some interesting odds as we have Bayern at plus 160 still underdogs back at home against this powerful manchester city side who's plus 150 and the draw is plus 265 so uh with everybody loving manchester city as much as they do right now are you, uh, are you are you going to be bold enough to go against the tide there? Yes, I am, actually. I'm going to go with a Bayern Munich win at plus 155 because now you're thinking, why has he done this? As he have got a 3-0 advantage. But that's why, because when you think about it, Bayern have to go for it. They have to roll the dice. They can't be timid in the second leg. Whereas City, there's that kind of elephant in the room, which is the Premier League title race. They can't really afford... They don't need to go all guns blazing at the Allianz Arena. Half the job is done, probably more than half, really. So you wouldn't be too surprised if some key names are dropped or you know dropped to the bench for the second leg. Even with that, of course, Man City is still going to be a very, very strong eleven. So just because the names have changed doesn't mean the ability is going to drop down. But I just feel that Bayern Munich got spanked at, in Manchester. There's no doubt about that. And I think it's going to be a bit of a lesson learned for Thomas Tuchel. Now, we kind of referenced about this kind of tactical game of chess that we thought was going to mm-hmm. unfold even that wasn't the case Bayern were just blitz and I just feel that are they going to allow themselves to get outplayed so badly twice in two weeks I don't think that's the case so by no stretch of the imagination am I saying that Bayern are going to qualify I mean if you're going to be that bold you could go plus 1400 Bayern needs to score at least three goals for this to happen you know for, to, for them to qualify would be an amazing comeback and it's not outside the realms of Champions League possibility because we have seen far stranger things but I think just to keep things simple and don't forget this could be a 2-1 win it could be a 1-0 win that just sees Bayern get some pride but City as I say already got one foot in the final four this will just allow them to, to get a second as well so just to start with I'm going to go for a simple Bayern win at plus 155. I like it uh, when if you're uh, you know coming into this game as Manchester City you don't want to necessarily even have to play your men heavy minutes, your, your main players. If, if this game can be within one goal, say, in the 60th, 65th, 70th minute, um, you might be able to see them start to bring on some of those subs. Obviously, the, that would only give them a two-goal lead for, for being able, before Myron would tie the series on both legs. But at any rate, I, th- I don't think there's going to be as much care factor uh, going for Manchester City when they know that they can lose by one or two goals, literally, and still be you know safe to, to move on so uh do you think that this game will continue to have uh the sort of you know the the goal scoring uh propensity that it had in the prior game uh or do you think that there's maybe a a little bit more reason to think that manchester city will tighten up and and try to keep there from being as many goals in this one well again Bayern munich aren't here to wave the white flag they're not going to say okay we got humbled so badly last week we're not going to try you're in man city you're on to the next round they're still you know wanting to qualify themselves therefore if we think that Bayern have to get at least three goals as a minimum to keep this tie alive that's three goals without conceding even when Man City are dialing it down by a gear or two 
they've still got more than enough in them to get a goal. So, for example, Bayern could win 3-1. That would be 4-3 on aggregate to City. We could get over 3.5 goals at plus 130. We could get the Bayern win that I just mentioned as well. You tick those two off. If you're feeling really flush, you could go with a Bayern win and over 3.5 goals, a plus 500, and combine the two. But I just feel that, you know, as I say, Bayern aren't going to roll over and just say, look, you know, well done, City. Congratulations, you're through. They're going to want to try and claw this back. And it's not alien to them they, they have kind of reeled back in big uh, disadvantages to start with before so it's not something they're not capable of doing so I just feel there's going to be goals and it's a little bit of a tight price at plus 130 maybe one a bit more but again these are two powerhouses in terms of European football and maybe because the second leg is it's been stretched open now we've got that 3-0 buffer it's not necessarily going to be that chess match because it seems a lot more fluid and Bayern have to go for it. City just need to trickle over the line. But to do that, they probably need at least one goal. So three plus one equals four. That's over 3.5. That math adds up to me as well. There you go. Uh, and, and I would say that even, you know, two apiece or something like that is, is very likely. But like you said, there, there should be some some openings and, and a bit more space as, uh, you know, Bayern, like you said, they don't really have anything to lose at this point. There's no point in scoring one or two goals for them. So they're going to be bringing it. And at the very worst, that uh, opens things up as well for Manchester City coming back the other way. So let's move on to the other game of the day. Uh, an interesting one as Inter Milan was able to beat Benfica at home in the first uh, first leg there, two to nothing. Benfica have now never beaten Inter Milan in four tries, one draw in there and three losses. Uh, and then much like AC Milan, Inter's defense has been incredible. Uh, four straight uh, clean sheets for them in the UEFA Champions League as well. Also, failing to score more than two goals in, in, in this uh, tournament, much like AC. But uh, at, at this point, you know, they're they're happy to to come into this one and keep, if, as long as they don't allow two goals, then they should be feeling pretty good about this one. Um, so where do you start when it comes to a, a matchup that seems to be favoring the Italian side? Yeah, I get the feeling the Benfica College Fund, which we sprouted a few weeks ago, is now come, coming to its natural end. We've got some money out of it, but it's been a bit depleted after last week's efforts. So because Inter Milan have a 2-0 advantage, you get the feeling that the job is almost done, not completely done. They've still got to make sure that they get over the line. And I feel they'd do that in the best way for Inter Milan. It's just going to be a very simple Inter Milan win and under 2.5 goals, which probably gives you the 1-0 or the 2-0. Because as good as Benfica have been, it just sort of seemed like they weren't clicking in the first leg. And I'm a bit disappointed, really, because I thought they were actually going to really test Inter Milan. They didn't show up. And I just feel that mm. after giving away the home advantage, you kind of wonder, are Benfica going to get two unanswered goals at the San Siro no especially not with the defensive stats that you just said right. and you, you can just see Inter Milan sort of squeezing this game so I just feel that you know if you combine Inter Milan and under 2.5 goals which is kind of in, Inter's MO anyway plus 350 I think it's a great price I agree. I mean, if, if Inter wins this game, it's not going to be because they're scoring more than one or two and, and they won't even be pressing uh, for a, a, a second one necessarily as strongly. I think they're happy to, to stay back, stay back, stay back and then play it up top on a counter to, to Romelu or, or, or what have you at this point for them with one of their three really solid strikers. So I think that's a solid theory and thought process there. If you wanted to hedge that a little bit and you wanted to go Inter uh, to win or tie under two and a half goals. You lose a bit of the juice, but you still get plus money for that to happen and, and feel like that's a really, really, really safe bet. Maybe a few less units or a few more units on that one, a few less, however you wanted to do it for, for them with to just win straight up and, and go under. I do believe in Benfica's pride enough at home to be, you know, trying for sure. But if, if there's, if they find the, their consistent as they did in the last match, their, their consistent attempts to move the ball up the pitch, uh, ending really before it even gets too far into the, into Inter's third on the defensive side, right? Like I just don't believe Benfica is actually going to have it uh, to be able to sort of own the uh, possession enough to, press and attack it's going to have to be because they just played up to one of their really fast wings on a ball that's unexpected and go over the top and that's just not as likely for this for against this formidable inter defense so maybe we try to juice up the idea that inter wins a little bit dan and, and talk about your second pick here yeah absolutely so we're going to stay on the inter winning theme by not a grand amount probably the now actually the narrowest amount you can win because we're going to go for one nil home win at plus 650 again they've got that two nil advantage they're at home now they only need one more goal to really put this to bed. Italian football, once you get that goal, you just lock the, sh the shop and you just say, that's it, good night. So I feel Benfica, as I say, they've run out of steam. The chance they had to really land a glove on Inter has gone. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember that Inter beat Porto, another Portuguese team, in the round of 16. I know Porto mm -hmm. went down to 10 men. It made life a little easier. But again, that goal difference is all you need, really. So I just feel that a routine victory, a narrow victory, but in the context of the tie, it will um, 
tie the bow spot on really. So yeah, I just feel that one nil plus six fifty is what you expect from an Italian team at home. So that's what I'm going to take. I would agree. It's going to be interesting if we have two Italian teams left in the uh, eight. Could even, well, no, can only have two at this point with two of them playing, but it would be very interesting to have that happen. I think probably a little bit less expected than we would have thought. But at any rate, that is all the time that we have for you in this one. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. As we said, we also have the Tuesday games up for you guys as well. So make sure you check those out. And until we see you next, happy betting. Happy betting.